The add event listener method attaches an event handler to the specified element without overriding existing event handlers, so you can add many event handlers to one element. So here's the syntax. Uh, you're going to put the element you're trying to access, and then add event listener, and then you're going to pass in the event, and this is the type of event, like click or mouse down, and then you're going to pass in the function, and then the use capture. This is a Boolean value specifying whether to use event bubbling or event capturing. This is optional, and I'll explain this in a little bit. So we already have this HTML code displaying over here, and we've already selected all of our elements. So what I'm going to do is create an event listener. So here we're attaching an event listener to the paragraph. That's this first paragraph up here. And it's going to be a click. So on click, we're going to run this function. So we're going to just going to set the background of my div to light blue, which it already is right now. But if we reset everything, it will go back to this coral. So now if I click the words, it changes to light blue. Now this actually does the same thing that this other that on click would do. So when you use add event listener and pass in click for the event, you could also do it like this. You could set on click equal to this function here. However, there are some bad things about using on click. With on click, you may have only one event assigned at a time. So if you assign another event to on click, it will overwrite the first event. You also can't set the use capture, so generally you want to use add event listener. However, on click does work in all browsers, and add event listener does not work in older versions of Internet Explorer before version 9. Before version 9, you have to use attach event instead of add event listener. Okay, instead of declaring our entire function in here, we can actually just pass a function reference, change text and then it will call that function. Then here it's just going to set the text content of paragraph 2 to some other words. So if I click here, you can see that two things just happened. The color changed to light blue and this text down here changed. With on click, only this text would change because it would have overwritten the changing the background color. But with add event listener, both things can happen. Okay, this right here is an example of something besides click. Before we were using the click event, now we're using the mouse over event. So if I bring the mouse over the first div, and we see it changes to dark khaki for div 2. Now I'm going to talk about the use capture parameter. This changes the order that things happen in. So we have an event on the first paragraph, and then we have an event on the first div. So the my p and my div. So when I'm clicking the paragraph, I'm also clicking the div at the same time. So the last parameter is, is how it is determined which event to run first. So let's add the last parameter here. Remember, you don't need it because it defaults to false. So the first event listener is going to run the change text function. The second event listener is going to run the change text to function. So we have to create that function. So here's change text to. Change text and change text two are both going to change the second paragraph text content. And this one is going to just take the text contents and add the real answer onto the end. And we're going to make a slight modification to change text one. Now both change text and change text two are going to take the text content that's already there and then append new text. And this will help us see what order the functions are executed in. If I click the paragraph 1 and the div at the same time, you can see first it's appending the real answer, and then it's appending, according to a Cornell publication, the answer is 700 pounds. So if this last parameter is set to true, the outermost element's event is handled first, and then the inner. However, if this is set to false, the innermost element's event is handled first, and then the outer. So let's see an example of that. And now here we can see first it appends, according to Cornell publication, the answer is 700 pounds, and then it appends the real answer. So again, when two event listeners are attached to two different elements, but they're going to run at the same time, the last parameter tells what order to run them in. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is remove event listener. 
With remove event listener, it's pretty self-explanatory. It just removes an event listener that you previously added. You just have to make sure that the parameters that you pass in are exactly the same so it removes the exact one. You can only remove an event listener where you are calling a function by a name here. If you actually put in the function like this into the event listener, then removing it won't work. Okay, well thanks for watching. My name is Bo Carnes. Don't forget to subscribe, and remember, use your code for good.